How can we teach real world flying to our students? Hey, M Missouri Nation, Jason Shepard here, and you are listening to, is it bad if I say it's my favorite podcast? It is the CFI Certificated Flight Instructor Podcast, and today we're gonna to be talking about instilling and teaching the principles of real world flying to our learners. Remember, that is the new buzzword. We're not to use the word students anymore. They are our learners. So I'm still trying to you know, break the, the, the chain of the primacy of, of saying student for so many years. So if you will work with me uh, to help me start using the phrase learners, and those of you who are learners, and we all are really, but those of you who are learners, when your instructors talk to you, make sure they know, hey, I am your learner right now just so they know, it, it's, a, it's a polite correction. It's like when someone comes up to me and says, Jason, I'm getting ready for my private pilot license, my PPL, and I, a little part of me just, just inside, it takes everything I have to breathe and say, it's actually a private pilot certificate. Maybe that's just a weird Jasonism. Maybe, maybe I'm the weird one. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe I am the strange one. Anyways, I want to talk with you all about real world flying and real world flying from an instructor's perspective. How do we instill real world techniques to our learners? Let me just briefly take 60 to 120 seconds to recap this week's video. I'm sure you saw the video on YouTube. Um, getting us ready for real world flying. And I talked about it from a flight planning standpoint. I shared how I love VFR flight plans. I believe their main purpose is for search and rescue. And I shared how I am a fan of, if you have a fuel stop, multiple VFR flight plans. So every time, basically, if I shut down the engine, that closes, that, that is, I need to close my flight plan. That is a flight plan, essentially, right? And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, please go back two days ago to Tuesday, last Tuesday in April, if you're listening to this as a recording uh, of April 2021, in the Principles of Mastery series. There will be more to this Principles of Mastery series too, because I, I owe you uh, some great flying footage as well. I then spoke about in the IFR realm, because this could be the CFII podcast just as much as it's the CFI podcast, in the instrument realm, always filing to a fix, not just filing, Ocala to, I think in the example I used, Orlando Executive. Not going from Ocala to OCF to ORL, but OCF to a fix on an approach at ORL and then ORL. And that's the actual destination. That's how I actually file everything as well. Why do I do that in the event of lost comms? ATC, myself, everybody, we know where we are going when that happens. And that makes our lives just so much easier. So I'm a big fan of that. What else can we be doing and should we be doing to instill confidence in our learners? I believe as flight instructors, we are truly practical psychologists and it's important for us. We have to be able to go kind of reverse engineer the, the job to be done with the goal here of what our learners are really after. Let me give you an example. I don't believe you teach real world flying the same to an individual who says, Jason, airlines are my dream versus Jason, I've got a great career. I'm 50 something years old. I just want to go fly to see my kids before they start having kids, right? While they're off in college or whatever it is. And maybe that's their goal instead. Real world flying needs to be taught in the vein of the type of real world flying that learner will be doing. Now, we also need to be smart enough to say, you know what? They may say they just want this for a hobby, but they end up being what we call a career changer down the line. They go, man, I really like this thing. I think I'm gonna just live it up and go be a corporate pilot uh, as a second career. So you, you still have to be prepping. And this isn't saying we're prepping any less. We are still preparing our learners to the highest level. I want everyone pursuing aviation mastery. Mastery is a quest on a score and a test, right? I've been saying that a lot lately, but it, it resonates so true. We're pushing everybody towards mastery, but the person who comes to me and says, I just want to go see the kids, I'm going to gear our training around that common goal. 
if you want to go, if you live in Florida and the kids are going to college in Tennessee, if budget and time allow, you better believe one of our long cross countries is going to be up to Tennessee and back because I want you to know what you don't know, to see what you've never seen, right? To, to learn these sort of things, to be on that long of a trip, to be able to prepare your whole family to go on that trip. Because how do you prepare yourself, your spouse, and the dog, let's say, all to go from Florida to Tennessee to see the kids, because they're in college, when all you've done as a student pilot, a learner pilot, is that what they're going to call it? I'm not sure. That all you've done as an a young learner is beat up the traffic pattern, go to the practice area, do a few prescribed cross countries. You've never gone on a trip long enough where you have to have one, maybe two fuel stops. You've never gone on a trip and had to th think about, wow, it was really bumpy. I don't know if my spouse would like that. Or you know what? The dog is not going to like this one bit. Uh, I might want to talk to the vet about getting the dog some medicine to calm it down while we're in the plane because I don't need that. And you don't think about these things when you're just going to the practice area. You also don't think about those things, I'm speaking from the learner perspective, our, our learners just think, I've got my certificate, I'm going to Tennessee. When we need to educate our learners by not only giving them that real world experience, but giving them the real world experience that, hey, your first flight with your spouse probably shouldn't be the four hour flight to Tennessee with a fuel stop, right? It, it should probably be, let's go out to the practice area. Let's just, let me just fly you around town and show you some of the sites around town. Look, there's the Walmart we shop at, like all, those sort of things to start with and work them into them. Even if they're super gung-ho, they love roller coasters, you say they'll never get nauseous. It doesn't matter, work them into it slowly. Don't try to go far places right off the bat. And you yourself, and this is speaking from the, an instructor, Jason speaking to a learner, you yourself need to build up your experience with new passengers, new people, new animals, whatever it is they're, they're looking to fly. CFIs, you have to understand their goal, show them their goal, that their goal is attainable, and then help them create, is the word I'm looking for, help them create the steps to get there. Because you don't go from temporary airman certificate all the way to Tennessee from Florida. It just doesn't work that way. You've got to work them into that. Now you say, that's cool, Jason. That makes sense. But what, what if they want to be an airline pilot? What if they want to be an airline pilot and you yourself have never been an airline pilot? How do you help someone with that? Well, I guarantee, first off, there's someone at the airport who can help serve as such a, a mentor and an assistant to help them um, in such a process. But you may not have the airline experience, and maybe you do, maybe you have experience in, in the jobs they want, but you know what it takes to be a professional pilot, don't you? You know the process it's going to take. If you're looking at someone who's at zero time right now and marches into your flight school and says, Jason, it's my dream to be an airline pilot. And here's, you know, you sitting over on the side, listening to the story going, man, and, and you, you've got a thousand hours right now, whatever it may be. And you're going, man, I, I've walked that walk. While I may not be or have been or have a desire to be an airline pilot, I can help them from zero to a thousand, zero to 1500. Because isn't that walk about the same for everybody? Very similar for everybody? They're going to change whether it's part 61, 141. Uh, maybe I can't make that generalized of a statement. But from zero to 1500, there's a lot of similarities in our stories, right? So don't ever discount yourself as being a great mentor to somebody just because your goals or what you've done doesn't align with their goals. Because you were once a zero time student with a, with a dream as well. And guess what? You probably had the same time constraints they're gonna have. You had the same money issues that they're gonna have. You have the same weather delays, check ride cancellations. You have blazed this trail before, CFIs, and this is your opportunity. I know this podcast is on real world flying, but what is more real world than weather delays, maintenance issues, check ride delays, taxi all the way up, do the run up to get a bad mag check and just come back with your tail between your legs, disappointing because you wanted to fly. That is real world flying. And it's important for you to be a beacon of light during those trying times. 
it's so easy when we're a flight instructor sometimes to forget how, where we've come from and how hard it was to get there and how we overcame those disappointments, whether they, we overcame them in the best way possible or not the best way possible. Both you learn from. You've learned from your great CFIs, you've learned from your good CFIs, and you've learned from your poor CFIs. And we've all had those. And even if you haven't had a poor CFI, I mean, just poor in quality, even if you haven't had a poor CFI, even your good and great CFIs have had off days before. And you thought, wow, that's, that's not like them. I don't want to be like that. Or when I have an off day, I'm going to say, I'm safe checklist, can't pass it up, not today, right? Real world flying starts with you, starts with your journey. Remember, were you, did you watch the m 14th birthday uh, presentation? If not, it's up there. It's, um, I, I really, really enjoy it. I, I don't want to say it's great content because I have a very, very strong bias um, to that. I hope uh, the comments and the kind words speak for themselves alone. Uh, it was actually quite different. Uh, we got to share the story of m 0 and my journey over the past 14 years to get to this moment in time speaking to you right now, which as you'll hear in the story, there were many, many times that you and I wouldn't be talking. In fact, you and I actually shouldn't be talking because of all the adversities I had to overcome and you have your story too. What was our buzzword during that webinar? It was foundation. Foundation was the word. You see, you have the foundation that these learners would kill to have. You might think, I'm just a flight instructor. I'm just this. I'm just a thousand hours away from my dream of 1,500 hours to 18. You, might, you could think all these things, or you could see it half full and go, man, I am just building my foundation. I am still building it. I am teaching students who would kill to have my logbook, who would kill to have the experience and the knowledge I have in my head. So you can't take that lightly. You have a gift and you are a light and you need to shine and share that with your learners. And that's going to prove so vitally important. I hope you see and can read between the lines that we are talking real world flying because nothing is more real world than where you have been and how you use your experiences to benefit your learners. You know, I'll, I'll give you a, one more illustration, then I'll, let you, then I'll let you wrap this up and enjoy the rest of your day. And by the way, don't forget, please, we produce three other podcasts, the Private Pilot Podcast, the Instrument Pilot Podcast, the Commercial Pilot Podcast. Encourage your learners to listen to all of them. I would recommend even you go back and humbly listen to them as well on your commute to work, whatever it is. And then one last little plug, don't forget, past your commercial pilot check ride is now out on Audible, if that's of an interest to you as well, uh, or your learners. So private instrument commercial audiobooks up as well. Um, anyways, one last little bit uh, to, to really share here as we bring this home. And I'll, I'll teach it through a story. And that's actually the, the premise of this, is teaching through stories. The content that we produce here at Missouri.com is a collective effort. I don't know everything. I can humbly tell you I don't know everything. We do, uh, how many live streams do I do? I, between the ground school member only webinar, that's two hours um, every week, and then in-flight coffee. So I am live at least, not including these Zooms we've been doing, but guaranteed, I am live three to three and a half hours every single week. And you can imagine, I get asked questions there that I don't always know the answer to. And you have to humbly say, I don't know that answer, but I know where to find that answer. You also have to, as an educator, not just an aviation educator, but just an educator as a leader, and you are leaders, by the way, you have to be able to take the complex and break it into stories. One thing I'll do when the team is working to create a lot of this collaborative content is by the time the content hits my desk, it is checked for grammar and checked for facts and everything is great. And then I can look at it and go, you know what? This is on um, in-flight emergencies or, or nighttime emergencies. And I can say, man, I should share right here my story where I picked up carb ice at night and the engine quit temporarily. And I put in there Jason's carb ice at night story. And, and we go in there and I can take the facts 
add my foundation, my real world experience to it, you might be saying, Jason, I only have 500 hours. I've never had any, you know, one, one time the vacuum light came on, like that's a story, right? We all have stories. You've blown a tire. You have found something on pre-flight. You all have stories. Just because you downplay them doesn't make them any less important. You took off when the wind says it was, you know, uh, 360 at 10, and it was really 360 at 20 gusts 30. Like, Mother Nature changes. That's the premise of that. So you have your stories. You have your foundation. I don't care how much time you have. You've got those stories. You have this foundation already. And I need you to capitalize on it and use it with your learners. So m 0 Nation, uh, you are such a, just an amazing, amazing blessing to us. I, I love this podcast. This is the, uh, of the four podcasts, as you can imagine, this is fourth in, if we put them in order as the most popular uh, to listen to. But it was funny, I was actually talking to Tom. Uh, Tom edits the audio of these podcasts. Coach Ray edits the video of these podcasts. You watch this on YouTube or Facebook. And I was talking to Tom and he was looking over our podcast stats from the other day. He said, Jason, if you look at the M0A podcast in the aviation category all time, like from inception, not week by week or year by year, I'm talking the history, as long as the iTunes aviation category has been in business, I, I, that date I couldn't tell you, I'm sure Tom knows it, that all four podcasts are in the top 25 uh, most listened to podcasts from private all the way down to CFI. It's outstanding. So we own four of the top 25 spots. I don't think anybody else can say that. So thank you, Tom and Ray and Amanda uh, and the whole team for all your hard work, but especially on this as well. It's, it's just a great, great joy. Uh, and um, we're reaching people and, and you are reaching people, CFIs. Um, here you are thinking that we are a blessing to you. I'd encourage you. It's quite the other way around. You're a blessing to us. Where does my learning take place? My learning takes place in the comment section of these videos. My learning takes place in my email inbox. My learning takes place when I review the support team's thousands of tickets they get every single month. Uh, right, you, you know, a few months ago, I sent away a survey. The survey is now like two months old. I am still pouring through it. Every single response. I'm talking probably over 10,000 responses in there. I'm just reading over everyone and I learned so much. I learned how to be a better educator, a better leader, a better businessman, a, a, a better pilot. I hear your stories and I, I, I'm on a tangent now, but I, I'm just, I hope this passion um, comes through to you and I hope you can take some of this passion, some of this confidence, whatever you want to call it, and maybe you've been down on yourself a little bit lately. I hope you can borrow some of my passion, borrow some of my confidence if you see it there um, and utilize it to light the spark uh, inside of you once again as well for your learners. So MZR Nation, uh, just love you guys to death. You are so, so amazing. Can't wait to read all your comments once again, read your emails, everything else. I'll see you um, on uh, upcoming Zoom webinars as well. Uh, we're diving next month into Mock Checkride May. So that's going to prove to be a lot of fun as well. All the podcasts will relate to mock check rides, etc. So we're looking forward to that. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you.